we are. Right, okay. And God bless you all. We greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus and excuse all the little delay. You know, the devil is a liar. When God wants to speak to us and we are ready to hear from God, the enemy attacks. Lastminute.com, the internet was trying not to start. That is the reason why we could not start. But before we do everything or anything, we will first, before uh, our sister, our pastor here, our uh, Dr. Alison Brown is going to give us the word, I think we need to first thank God. We need to give him all the glory. So with me right now, start praying. Pray, asking God to prepare your hearts for the word you're gonna receive tonight. And then I'm going to introduce her, of course. Father, we give you all the glory and we pray because you are God and there's mm -hmm. no you. Be lifted up, be exalted, be glorified, be magnified. In everything, we give you all the glory and we pray tonight that as we come together as one, during this Amen. week, we come together to hear a word from you because the word is lacking in this world. The word is what gives us freedom because it gives mm. us knowledge of who you are. So mm. I want to pray that, Lord, tonight you use your daughter, you use your sent one, you use your anointed servant to speak your word in a way that will be powerful in a way that will heal someone, in a way that will set someone free, in a way that will bring mm -hmm. the knowledge of God. God. Thank you for allowing mm -hmm. us to be here. Thank you for all you've prepared in advance of time. Thank you because we know that this meeting is not in vain. We give you all the glory and we say mm -hmm. thank you for all. And I also bless you for everyone who is listening tonight. For your glory, Lord, magnify your holy name through your servant, Dr. Allison. Good evening, Dr. Allison. So happy to... Good evening, Sister Regine. How are you? <laughs> I am blessed. I am happy. I'm, you know, it's been a long time. We have not had time. We, we were meant to speak at some point of time. Things have been so, 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 so different with all yeah. that has happened. And I know you've got lots of projects. So first of all... For those who are listening to you for the first time, because it's not the first time we have invited you in Rema Resource Center to give us the word. And I remember how we were so blessed last time by the word you gave us. And I know that tonight is going to be powerful. If you can introduce yourself, I think that's the best mm -hmm. way. Introduce yourself a bit more for those who are listening before we, we go in the word of God tonight. Well, my name is Dr. Alison Brown. And... Um, I've been born again now for over 30 years. In fact, I celebrated my 30th um, anniversary of uh, coming to know Jesus, Yeshua, as my Lord and Savior uh, in March uh, back in 1991. Okay. So I've been saved for 30-odd years, um, and I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit um, about two years after I got saved. And... Um, then the Lord started taking me out on the mission field. Uh, so I've been a speaker abroad. I've been a speaker in Africa, India. I don't know, almost about 30 countries now. Uh, the Lord has used me to minister to people and speak at different conferences and crusades. Yes. Um, in 1997, that was a watershed moment for me because, and this is how I'm going to bring this topic that I'm going to be ministering on tonight to you. It was in 1997, an aunt of mine died, and um, we found lots of papers uh, that had been hidden for many, many years. And in those papers, it was disclosed that we were actually Jewish, our family. But of course, it had been hidden because of per fear of persecution. And that led me on a journey because I wanted to, although I was a Christian, born again, believer but I wanted to find out a little bit about my Jewish heritage and look a little bit into Judaism and and then the Lord continued to lead me on from that into much deeper revelation of the word of God 
So tonight is more of a teach rather than a preach. I hope that's okay with all Amen. of you. Yes, um, because I've just recently finished writing a new book. It's called God's Blueprint. And in it, I talk about the seven prophetic keys okay. uh, that the Lord has blessed to me. And basically, the seven prophetic keys are the seven feasts of Yeshua or the seven seven Jewish festivals that are celebrated every year. I don't know whether you know very much about um, the Jewish feasts, uh, uh, but they all point to Jesus. Yeshua is the name for Jesus in the Hebrew. And they all point to, to Yeshua. They all point to Jesus. Mm-hmm. And what I what because we're coming up to Easter, <laughs> uh, which is actually Passover, I don't particularly like the name Easter because if you have a look at some of the background to the name Easter, you will find out that originally it actually stems back to a goddess called Aostri. And she has her roots in Isis, an Egyptian goddess. So um, we don't have time to go into all of that, but that's to do with Constantinople and him um, taking Christianity and the pagan festivals and mixing things together, basically. But as I said, we don't have time to go into that today. But I prefer to call it the Passover because with the Passover, we're passing from death to life. And that's what happens when we become born again in Yeshua. We literally pass from death to life. And this is what we should be celebrating during Passover. We should be celebrating our born again experience, passing from death to life. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, let's get into the word. And I want us to go to, if you've got your Bibles with you, to Exodus chapter 12, because I'm going to read from Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 to 1 to 14. So bear with me, read, read along in your Bibles. And then afterwards, I'm going to do an exegesis and I'm going to have a look at uh, quite a few things from more of a messianic Hebraic perspective. So you might want to take some notes or what you can do is you can get my my new book, um, which is, as I said, God's Blueprint, uh, seven, seven Prophetic Keys uh, to the Re- Redemption of Mankind. And that's a free book. So all you have to do is send an email to riveroflifeuk at hotmail.com. That's riveroflifeuk at hotmail.com. And I will send you a free PDF copy of this book. And then you can have a look uh, into, into the word of God. And I trust it will be a blessing to you. So without further ado, chapter 12. And we're going to start with verse one. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. Now, the month that he's referring to there is the month of Nisan, which is the first month of the Hebrew religious calendar. Nisan shall be to you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house, a lamb for a house. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day. So you'll keep it for four days, 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation in Israel shall kill it, the whole assembly, shall kill it in the evening, betwixt the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, unleavened bread, that's bread without sin, bread without yeast, yeast is symbolic of sin. So unleavened bread is bread without yeast or sin. 
and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Bitter herbs. Do not eat it raw, nor sodden at all with water. So you don't water it down in any way. But roast with fire. Roast with fire. His head with his legs and with the insides thereof. And you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remains of it till the morning you shall burn with fire. And thus you shall eat it with your loins girded, your loins girded, and your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste, so hurriedly, in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite all of the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague, okay, the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be to you for a memorial. In other words, a remembrance. You shall remember it. And you shall keep it a feast unto the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall keep it for a feast by ordinance forever. That is for the rest of eternity. Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away leaven or yeast out of your houses. For whosoever eats leavened bread from the first day into the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. Okay, so let's go into a little bit of an exegesis on all of this. So as I said, Passover is the beginning of months. Okay, it is the first month of the religious calendar, which is the month of Nisan, that's spelled N-I-S-A-N, for those of you that are taking notes. So what's the significance for us? In what way is that prophetic? Well, we bring be, begin a new covenant with Yeshua, a new relationship, a new covenantal relationship with God. We become born again. Yes, we were born of the flesh, but now we become born again of the spirit. So it's all talking about new beginnings. And that's John chapter three, verses five to seven. And we become new creations in Christ Jesus as well. You can see that in Second Corinthians chapter five, seventeen. Passover is the first feast in the Hebrew religious calendar. And likewise, through Passover, we take our first step with God, with our walk with God. Now, you'll notice that the lamb is, is uh, taken on the 10th day of Nisan, but it's kept in the house for four days. Now, can you imagine you've got this little lamb, this beautiful little lamb, in your house for four days because you're going to examine it to make sure it doesn't have any sickness or disease or any blemish that would uh, disqualify it from being a perfect sacrifice. So you can just imagine how the children might get attached to that little lamb, to that sweet little innocent lamb, so that when that lamb is sacrificed, when it's killed, maybe one or two tears may actually be shed. So that's one reason, part of the reason why the lamb is kept for four days, so that you can feel a little bit of the pain um, that our Heavenly Father went through when the Lamb of God, Yeshua, Jesus, was sacrificed for us to pay for our sin. Okay, so the lamb is hidden for four days. Likewise, Jesus, Yeshua, he entered into Jerusalem, in the Hebrew that's Yerushalayim, on the low weekly Sabbath at exactly 9 a.m. in the morning. Now, I don't have time to go into uh, detail as to how I work all of that out, but just get the book and you'll find out a lot more. Okay, so it's the low weekly Sabbath. Now, it's the low Sabbath because in... in um, in Judaism, we have low Sabbaths and we have high Sabbaths. Now, high Sabbath days are high holy days. And the seven feasts of Yeshua happen on high Sabbath days, whereas 
weekly, we have the weekly Sabbath. So there's a low Sabbath and there's a high Sabbath. Okay. So Jerusalem, uh, sorry, Jesus rides into Jerusalem on the low weekly Sabbath at 9 a.m. in the morning. That's on the 10th of Nisan because he's the Lamb of God. We need to keep bear that in mind. Now he's examined for four days. Why four days, though? What's the significance of four days? Well, if you remember in Psalm 90, verse 4, and 2 Peter 3, 8, a day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as a day in God's calendar. So those four days actually represent 1,000 years each, so that's 4,000 years. So it's exactly 4,000 years from the transgression of Adam in the Garden of Eden, not from the, be not from the beginning of the world itself when the world was created. It's actually 4,000 years. We have an age of innocence up until the year when Adam uh, transgressed in the Garden of Eden. So we have 4,000 years from the time that Adam transgressed and fell um, into sin by eating the tree, obviously, uh, in the Garden of Eden that he was forbidden to eat, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay, So Yeshua comes 4,000 years later, four days, 4,000 years later, which is why Yeshua said to the to the you know, the Jewish leaders of the day, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, that were supposed to know the scriptures, know the Torah, why he could say to them, you know, you should have known the time of my visitation. You know, why did you not know the time of my visitation? Now, again, I don't have time to go into all of this, but the it, in Genesis, at the beginning of Genesis, Genesis, um, it says, in the beginning, and the Hebrew word there is bereshit, and contained within that word bereshit, that Hebrew word bereshit, uh, is the whole 7,000, is contained within that, the whole 7,000 plan of God for the redemption of, of mankind. Again, get my book and it will explain to you uh, the bereshit, what I call the bereshit prophecy. I've also got um, a YouTube video that you can go to if you want to learn more about the Bereshit prophecy but the whole of God's plan of redemption for mankind is contained within the those Hebrew letters within that word in the beginning um, Bereshit the Hebrew word Bereshit the whole uh, redemption plan of mankind is contained within that and wh when you when you study the scriptures from a Hebraic perspective and you look at, at you look at God's perfect language, which is the Hebrew language, as Zephaniah chapter three talks about Hebrew being the perfect language, the perfect, it's the perfect language of God. And when you start to, to go into the Hebrew language and into Hebrew numerology as well, you understand then that. This Bible, this Bible here is, has to be the divine work of God, has to be the divine work of a supernatural power. Because our, our Heavenly Father, he is a perfect mathematician. He's a perfect linguist. And every, every word, when you're looking at words in the Hebrew language, um, the the revelation and the meaning that that comes forth when you look at it through through Hebrew eyes, so to speak, in the Hebrew language and using Hebrew gam gamatria and numerology, you you just you just fall on your knees basically. And you, I mean, if anybody says, I mean, when people sometimes say to me that don't know the Lord, they say, oh, that Bible, oh, that Bible's a load of rubbish. It's just all old stuff it's all fairy tales and and I, I kind of like think you just do not know you just have no idea and the more I study the word of God and the more I look at the word of God in the original Hebrew language the more I realize I do not know because there is within this word there is just so many different levels of meaning and revelation it is just absolutely awesome. Anyway, I digress. Let's get back to our exegesis of uh, chapter 12 of Exodus here, the Passover. Okay, so 
we have the, the um, four days, which is 4,000 years uh, from the transgression of Adam in the Garden of Eden. Uh, so for 4,000 years, Yeshua was hidden in heaven. And also the num with the number four, the gospel goes out to the four corners of the world. Now, you have also the Ark of the Covenant, the four corners of the Ark of the Covenant. And again, that speaks of the gospel going out to the four corners of the world, because Yeshua, Jesus, is the Ark of the Covenant. Glory to God. Well, that's, that's, another, um, that's another lesson. <laughs> OK, but the gospel going out to the four corners of the world, because I often wondered why. Jesus exclaims in John chapter 12, verses 20 to 26, that's John 12, verses 20 to 26, why he exclaims there, the hour has come, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified when the Greeks come, when the Greeks want to come and see Jesus. Well, it's because of now when the Greeks come to, to Yeshua and want to speak to, to Yeshua, and the Greeks, of course, are outside of the congregation of Israel. But Jesus knew then, you know, this, this is the time when I, I am to be glorified because this gospel now has to go out to the four corners. It has to go out to the, all the Gentile nations. And the Greeks were symbolic of the Gentile nations that the gospel was going to go out to. OK, so. And also the number four is very, very interesting because we have the four days. The number four is very interesting because in the Hebrew alphabet, the fourth letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Dalit. And Dalit means the door. And who said I'm the door? Yeshua is the door to heaven. So those four, four days speaks of Yeshua being the door who on after those four days of being examined is going to open up the door for salvation for the whole world through his sacrifice on the cross. Glory to God. And that, that's the Hebrew letter Dalet. And it's a picture of a door and its number is the number four. So hence, again, we have the four days uh, that so Yeshua had to be examined for four days. He had to be a lamb without any blemish, in other words, without any sin. And he was examined by the chief priests and elders. He was examined by Pilate, by Herod, by Annas, by Caiaphas, the high priest. There was two high priests the year that Yeshua was crucified. Judas, the centurion and the repentant thief. That brings us to the number eight, which is Chet. That's the letter Chet in the Hebrew alphabet. And it's it's like this. It's it's like um it's like a rectangle. OK, but the bottom is open. So it's like a door. Yes, it's like a door. And so, again, we have a picture with this latter chat. We have a picture of the lintel and the doorpost being splashed, being daubed with blood. So, again, it's, it's talking about Yeshua and, and the sacrifice and how he was going to be examined eight times. And the number of eight speaks of eternity. Yes, because through Yeshua, we have eternal life. And the, the letter Chet also talks about to protect, to cut off, to separate, just like the Hebrew children were separated from the Egyptians so that the plagues did not come on them because of the blood. So likewise, Yeshua separates us from the world and from all the evil work of the devil, of the enemy, and we are protected. And as Yeshua said to the Lord, to his father, um, I have not lost any of those that you have given to me, save the one that was destined for perdition, meaning Judas Iscariot. OK, so he's the lamb of the first year. He's the firstborn after the flesh, set aside to bring, bring the firstborn after the spirit. So he's the firstborn of Mary after the flesh. And he's the firstborn of God spiritually, because uh, God the Father and God the Son, God has be begotten. Yeshua, Jesus. And he's also the firstborn of the dead. So when we're talking about first, the first month, etc., he's the firstborn of the dead, the, you know, the lamb of the first year, etc. So we've got first, first, first coming up. Um, and um, the first day of the week on the Sunday, the first day of the week in, in the Hebrew week is a Sunday. 
uh, we bring the first fruits offering. The first fruits offering talks about the resurrection of Yeshua. So we bring the first fruits as a wave offering. And it honors the re re resurrection and prophetically looks forward to our resurrection or our rapture. Glory to God. Okay, the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, because that's also significant, is Aleph. And Aleph speaks of the Father, Father God. And it's an ox. It's a picture of an ox. Now, we are yoked with Yeshua. My burden is easy, he says, the Lord says to us, and my yoke is light. And that's in Matthew chapter 11, verse 30. So we are yoked to Yeshua because he is the Father. He is the Son. He is the Holy Spirit because God is one. Um, in the, we, we have the Shema Yisrael, Shema Yisrael, the Lord your God, the Lord, he is one. And we are now one in him. So the Lamb of the first year, it's all very prophetic. It all speaks of our redemption and how we are now the for, firstborn after the spirit because we had our first, our natural birth. But so that firstborn after the natural and then we have the firstborn after the spiritual. Glory to God. OK, it has to be a male. Oh, and I've had some feminist uh, theologians, you know, groan and moan at me about Oh, but, you know, the Bible is sexist. God is gender biased. Uh, Jesus was a male. And when I was at university, at, uh, Exeter University, doing my degree in theology there, um, we had, um, I did feminist theology, and uh, we had a picture uh, of Jesus on the cross, but Jesus was a woman. And at that time, I thought, hmm, that doesn't look quite right to me somehow. It isn't because it has to be a male lamb. Why? Why does it have to be a male lamb? Not because God is gender biased in any way, shape or form. But now in Christ, there is now no male nor female, Jew nor Gentile. All are one in Christ Jesus. OK, he's not gender biased because it was through one man's transgression. OK, that sin came into the world. And we see that in Romans chapter five, verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 12 to 14. So as Adam was the first male who sinned, who transgressed, so a second Adam has to reverse the curse that came in through the first Adam. So again, it must be a male. So it's nothing to do with being gender biased at all. Sin came in through the first Adam, so therefore a second Adam, yes, had to atone for that sin, had to pay the price for that sin. It's a lamb for a house, a lamb for a house. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So I have my little tallit here, my prayer shawl. Um, don't have time to go into an exegesis on the prayer shawl because that would be another another um, session. But it's uh, I don't know if you can see that. It says um, here, choose choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that's from Joshua uh, 24, 15. So Cornelius, Acts chapter 15, he gets saved in all of his house. And we are all part of the household of faith. So it has to be a lamb for a house. But we also have a progressive revelation of the lamb. We have a lamb for the house. Then we have a lamb for the nation, where uh, Caiaphas talks about uh, do you not know that it's better for one man to die for the nation? Um, and then we have the lamb of the world, like uh, as um, John the Baptist exclaimed, look, the lamb of God. Yes, we have the lamb for the world. And that brings us on to um, Genesis 22. Do you remember what's in Genesis 22? Well, Genesis 22 is called the binding of the covenant or the binding of the sacrifice. What do I mean by that? OK, Isaac says to his father as they're going up the mountain, you know, he's carrying the wood on his back and they're going up to the mountain to make a sacrifice. And Isaac says to Abraham, his father, you know, we've got everything for the sacrifice but except the lamb. We don't have the lamb. And Abraham replies, the Lord will provide Jehovah Jireh, which is where we get one of 
God's names, that he is the Lord who provides for us. But um, with, with this one, we have uh, Abraham here prophetically seeing into the future. I don't know if you have ever read, read in Genesis 22 and, and seen that Abraham saw the place afar off. And he's what did he see? He saw Mount Moriah in the future where God would provide the lamb for the world. Uh, he saw the place afar off, which brings us to Yeshua's words. When he was talking to the religious leaders, he said to them, verily, verily, I say to you, before Abraham was, before hey, Abraham was, I am, I am. Glory to God. So we have the binding of the sacrifice. In other words, because Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son, this bound God to sacrifice his son. Because if a man's going to do it and sacrifice his son, Abraham did it believing 100% that God was more than able to, to raise his son from the dead, raise Isaac from the dead. Um, but it didn't come to that, of course, because the angel stopped him as he was lifting up the knife to, to kill to kill Isaac. Um, but then that bound, because Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son, that then bound God to sacrifice his son, the Lamb of God for the world, for the sins of the world. And then Yeshua says, before Abraham was, I am. And that was very significant that I am there, because that's actually the name of God. That's actually Yahweh, Yod Ha Ve Ha. And Yahweh, literally, if you look at the Hebrew letters, you've literally got this interpretation from the name of God. It literally means the hand of grace nailed in grace. And that's contained within the word for God I am. I am that I am. Yahweh, Yod Ha Ve Ha. Hand of grace nailed in grace. Glory to God. So contained even within the name of God is God's plan of redemption. Hand of grace nailed in grace, just as Yeshua was nailed. Three nails, one there, one there, and one through both of his feet. Three nails for the Trinity. Yes, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, they all had to be in agreement for the redemption price for mankind. Amen. Must be killed between the evenings, which brings us on to something else, some more revelation here. Must be killed between the evenings. OK, that's when the lamb must be killed. So from 6 a.m. in the morning to um, 3 p.m. in the afternoon uh, is the ninth hour. Sorry, yeah, for the, it's the ninth hour from 6 a.m. to because there's a 24 hour period. I don't, again, I don't have time to go into an exegesis on, on all the how they work out all the timings, but again, just get my book and because I don't have time in this video to go into, into in depth teaching on this. But Yeshua gives up his spirit at the ninth hour, which is the is 3 p.m. in the afternoon, the ninth hour from ninth hour from 6 a.m which brings us to a little bit more revelation because the number nine in, in Hebrew uh, numerology is the letter Tet, the letter Tet. And Tet, interestingly enough, is the picture of a snake. So the ninth hour, Yeshua had to conquer sin by the ninth hour because that number nine is significant it's referring to the letter tet which means snake and jesus was lifted up on a wooden pole and literally became that snake that sin that snake symbolic of sin for us literally became sin there was no sin in yeshua but he became sin for us and paid the paid the price for all of our sin on that cross on that wooden pole just as Moses in Numbers chapter 21 verses 4 to 9 was told by God to make a bronze serpent or snake now bronze is speaking of judgment 
from the Speaks of Judgment on a wooden pole. And when the people looked at the, the uh, snake on the pole, they were healed. Glory to God. When we look upon Yeshua, we are healed. Amen. Glory to God. And so the ninth part, and we also, and he also paid the price, of course, for the Holy Spirit to be sent into the world. And when we think about the number nine, we think of the number, the nine gifts, of the Holy Spirit, and the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Okay. The whole assembly shall kill it. What does this mean? We all, we are all guilty of um, killing the Lamb of God by our, through our sin. Not just the Romans and, you know, oh, well, it was the Romans that killed Jesus or it was the Jews that killed Jesus. No, the whole world was responsible because the whole world fell into sin. All have fallen short of the glory of God. All, every one of us has fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. So we, we're all responsible. Yes. He died for all sinners. That's Romans chapter 3, verses 10 and 23 all have fallen short of the glory of god no one had the power to take away yeshua's life he gave it willingly he was a willing sacrifice you know i don't know if any of you know anything about sheep i grew up on the farm but um sheep are, are just very very docile kind of animals and you know when you've got a little lamb it's very trusting and, and it will just go wherever you tell it to go, do whatever you tell it to do. Um, and Yeshua, likewise, he was willing. He didn't fight it. He was willing to lay down his life. Um, he gave it willingly. How do we know that he gave it willingly? That, you know, well, all those soldiers came for him and bound him up and everything. No. When they were asking in the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus of Nazareth was, uh, because they were looking for him, Jesus simply said, I am. And what happened? I am he. They all fell down. Because Yeshua, he was using the, what we call the Tetragrammaton, the name of God, Yahweh, yod ha vei ha and they all fell backwards. So he gave his life willingly. Yes? And not only that, he said to Peter, well, I can call on 12 legions of angels to fight for me. You know, when Peter's going with his sword and cutting off somebody's ear and stuff, you know, <laughs> Jesus says to Peter, do you not know that I can call on 12 legions of angels? Well, one, one angel in the scriptures was able to kill 185,000 men. So 12 legions, a legion is a thousand, 12 legions of angels or 12,000 angels could kill the entire population of the world. Do the maths, work it out. <laughs> yes, even today, even though you know we're approaching 8 billion on planet Earth, uh, 12 legions of angels are still more, far more than enough to, to um, kill every single person on planet Earth. So he gave up his life willingly, just as an innocent lamb is, is willingly led to the slaughter. Okay, blood must be applied to the door. So we think about Dalit, that letter Dalit again, number four. Jesus is the door to the kingdom of God, door to salvation. He said in John chapter 10, I am the door. And by, by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The body of the lamb must be eaten the same night. The work of the cross was done within a 24 hour, in less than a 24 hour period. Okay. Prophetic of the body and blood of Yeshua. Okay, when we take Holy Communion, we, we are remembering when 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 um, we're doing the Passover um, meal, we're, we're remembering the Lord. In verse 14, this day shall be unto you for a memorial. So we will remember the Lord. And you'll see behind me, I've got four, four cedar cups here, because when we're doing the, the cedar Passover meal, we have, have the four cups. Uh, there the four glasses of wine and each each glass represents um, certain aspects of the Haggadah, the Passover cedar meal. And here on top here, I have a piece of matzos. I don't know if you can if you can see that. Um, and this piece of mat matzos 
um, is, as you can see, it looks like it's been burnt. Okay, so that's symbolic of, of the Lamb of God, uh, you know, well, the Lamb being roasted, needs to be roasted. So it speaks of the fire of affliction um, because Jesus on the cross, he was separated. It wasn't just physical pain that he went through, but also the, the worst, I think, was probably a separation from the Father because the Father could not look upon sin. He could not look upon sin. And so therefore Yeshua was separated from God. Um, and that fire represents the fire of affliction, the fire of tribulation, the fire of persecution, the fire of separation from God himself. And you'll see that it's striped, like Jesus's back, Yeshua's back was striped. You will also see that it has lots of little holes. Hopefully you can see that, lots of little holes. Uh, Jesus, Yeshua was pierced, yes, uh, and um, and also it's wheat, it's made of wheat, but it's unleavened without sin. There's no yeast in this bread. This is unleavened bread, matzah, matzos, one piece, matzah, plural. Um, and um, it's made from wheat. And as Yeshua said, lest a grain of wheat fall to the ground and die, it's not going to produce any harvest, uh, again, referring to his death. So striped, pierced, toasted, unleavened, and made from wheat. Okay. When we're talking about fire, that brings another letter uh, from the Hebrew alphabet, and that letter is Shin, Shin. And that speaks of where Yeshua was going to be crucified, because if you look at the topography of Jerusalem, Jerusalem, it's actually in the shape of the letter Shin, and Shin is, is curved like this, and then there's another curve down, down the center. It's actually three vars join together the letter shin and the letter shin speaks of the three nails one two three nails of yeshua the three vars because vav is the, a picture of the nail and um and the nail joins man to god so every hebrew letter has significance so you have the letter shin Okay, during the Passover cedar, we have bitter herbs. So that talks also about bondage and burden of Egypt, burden of the world that Yeshua has delivered us from. And uh, in, Jesus said to us, in this world, we will have tribulation and trials and persecutions in John chapter 16, and verse 33. Uh, but be of good cheer, he says, I have overcome the world, just as Yeshua has overcome the world. So can we in him. Glory to God. Now, the lamb must not be sodden. So the lamb is symbolic of the word of God. So the word of God must not be watered down. Unfortunately, this has happened uh, in over in, during history. Um, and the, the word has been watered down, unfortunately. <laughs> And we see that in Second Timothy chapter three verse five, that um, the Paul's letter to Timothy talks about there being a form of godliness but devoid of power, devoid of any power. Okay, the head and the legs must be eaten. Well, the head speaks of us putting on the mind of Christ, and when we have the mind of Christ, if you look at two Corinthians chapter ten from verse five. Casting down all your vain imaginations, all the thoughts that the devil would like to put into your mind, and putting on the mind of Christ and thinking the way that Yeshua would think, then your walk, you, you know, you're going to eat the head and the legs, then your walk with Yeshua will be perfect. Because if you're if you have the mind of Christ and you're dwelling in the word of God, because Yeshua is the word, then your walk will be correct. You will be able to walk just as Jesus walked. Okay. Eaten in haste, well, we must be quick to leave Egypt, must be quick to leave the world. Uh, Yeshua said, you know, if if you're going to follow me, you can't put your hand to the plow and then look back. Uh, it's not going to work. You, you have to leave the world in haste and leave the things of the world behind because these things are all passing. And, you know, we need to look to the future, to look to our future in Yeshua. Don't look back like Lot's wife and be turned to, to a pillar of stone. Okay. Right. Um, and then we need to have our loins girded 
In other words, to serve and to obey, we need to have our shoes on our feet. That's talking about walking in the gospel of peace. Yes. And then we need to have the staff which is the believer's authority in Christ Jesus. The staff in our hand represents the believer's authority in the name of Yeshua. The name of Yeshua is our, our rod. The name of Yeshua is our staff. And that brings to mind the letter Lamed, which, which is the tallest of all the letters. It's right in the middle of the Hebrew alphabet. And it's like a bolt of lightning coming down from heaven because our authority comes down from heaven. And the name of Jesus, our rod, is the name above every name. So whatever you're going through right now, if there's a sickness or disease, whether it's cancer, diabetes, whatever, if it's got a name, then Yeshua's name is the name above all names. And you need to take your rod, rod of authority, your staff, which is the word of God and the, and the name of Yeshua. And in Jesus' name, you command it out, which brings me to um just as um just the lord's just reminded me just as um aaron's rod ate up all the snakes yes so with your rod of authority you can eat up all the snakes of the devil all every every work of the evil one you can cast out demons and you can eat up all the work of the of the evil one with your rod of authority in the name of jesus and it's applied by faith. Don't forget, it's applied by faith. You have to apply everything by faith. Now, that brings me to um, something that I, I want to share with you. Um, now, the Lord gave me a dream about two weeks ago. And it was, a, it was very vivid. And it was very powerful. And in this dream, in this dream, um, I, my physical body started to be covered with boils, with boils, which reminds us of one of the plagues um, of Egypt, where where they were covered with with these boils, and um, I started coming coming out with all of these boils on my physical body, and then I went through um, into another room, and my son was there, and he shouted out to me, "Mother, pray." Use your authority in Jesus' name. You use your rod, your staff in Jesus' name and command those boils to be gone. And so I did. And quite literally, before my eyes, I saw all of these boils that had erupted out on my body. They all started to disappear and, and disintegrate, and they were all gone. So I prayed to the Lord about this. And what I believe the Lord is saying is there is a worst plague coming. I don't want to be a prophet of doom and gloom, but there is a worst plague coming than this coronavirus. I don't know when because the Lord has not given me any any time scale on this. But the Lord has has revealed to me that there is going to be another plague coming and it will be worse than coronavirus. But the Lord said to me, tell my people to use their rod of authority, just as Aaron used the rod to eat up all the evil snakes, just as Moses used his rod of authority to part the Red Sea, so we in Christ Jesus must use our rod of authority because this plague that is coming is going to seriously baffle all the doctors. Um, and it's, it's like... Um, it's like almost like there's some kind of stings, some kind of stinging sen sensation it will bring. And um, it is very evil. It's from the pit of hell. But we have nothing to fear because just as the uh, Hebrew children were shielded in Goshen, yes, there was light in Goshen, but darkness in the world. Um, so likewise, the Lord will shield us those of us who are walking by faith, providing we're walking by faith and we use our rod of authority. So if any of these plagues come anywhere near us, just use your authority in Jesus' name and those plagues will pass over you and your household. Okay, we'll pass over because you are covered by the blood of Jesus. You have, you have the letter Chet, as it were, on, 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 your, on your heart and your 
your lintels and your doorposts are daubed with the blood of Yeshua now. Um, and you have authority in Jesus' name. So it's time for the body of Christ to rise and shine and take her authority in Jesus' name because worse is coming. Um, the, the Lord said, uh, Matthew 24, you only got to just go there and read it, um, that earthquakes, more earthquakes are coming, more, more vulca volcanic eruptions are coming, more plagues are coming, more the weather patterns are being disturbed. I mean, they've had snow in Texas, etc., which is absolutely unheard of before. Uh, more tsunamis, more plagues, because we're getting so close now so close to the day when we are going to be taken out of this world. Um, and that's another feast that's later, later on. Um, but there is going to come a day soon when we're going to be taken out of this world. We don't have very much time left now. Don't look at the things of this world. These, these things around you, they are passing. Just look to Yeshua. Keep focused on him. You know, when I'm out playing with my doggy in the in the park and she's playing with her ball, I'm often saying to her, you know, don't get distracted by people over here or people over there or what this person's doing or that person or what this dog is doing or that dog is doing. You know, focus on your ball, on getting your ball back. <laughs> Likewise, just as my dog focuses on her ball, we must focus on Yeshua. And when we lift up our eyes and we focus upon him and keep our, our eyes upon him, okay, and not on the world, yes, then our faith is built up and we can take our rod, yes, uh, which is symbolized by, by the letter Lamed in the Hebrew alphabet, and we can destroy all the snakes, all the work of the evil one, and we can even part the Red Sea. If the Lord tells you to go here or there or whatever, use your rod of authority and part, part the waves, as it were, and walk on through. Amen. Glory to God. Passover is very, very prophetic. Okay. Finally, I'm, the other thing, the last thing I want to share with you is a vision that the Lord gave to me a long time ago now. This is going back to about 1995 where he, he revealed to me the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, when we take our Holy Communion, we are remembering Passover, that we've passed from death to life, that the, the wine uh, represents the blood of Yeshua and the bread, uh, his physical body. By his stripes, we were healed. And through his blood, we are saved and we are cleansed and we are sanctified. Um, so. But there's a, a supper coming. We are going to be taking Holy Communion in heaven, in our heavenly Goshen. When, when the rapture takes place, and the rapture will, will take place, once you understand the seven feasts of Yeshua, then your eschatology will be correct. Because when you look at the Hebrew feasts, they speak all about God's plan of redemption, 7,000-year plan of redemption. And you, then you cannot get... get um, out of sync as regards or or get waylaid by false teaching and false theology um, because the next festival to be to be fulfilled is the feast of Rosh Hashanah and that feast festival speaks all about the rapture of the church of the of the believers and many years ago back in 1995 just briefly I will close with this um, the Lord took me to heaven and um, in heaven he blessed me to see the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, the marriage supper of the, of the Lamb will take place in heaven again. People have, have got this uh, wrong, and some people say, oh, it's going to happen here on earth, blah, blah, blah. No, it's going to happen in heaven. And the Lord showed me, he revealed to me um, the marriage supper of the Lamb. I was taken to this huge ornate door. It had silver carvings uh, on the front of it. Silver, of course, stands for, for the... Uh, the, the redemption price, the 30 pieces of sil silver, and the door was slightly open. And, and the Lord said, go on, I want you to look inside. And when I looked inside, um, I first of all saw an angel. And this angel was pouring red wine into a, 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 from a silver, silver um, flask into a, a silver goblet. And then to the left, 
uh, there was another angel doing something uh, on one of the tables, but there was just tables upon tables upon tables upon tables stretching out into the distance. This room had no walls. I could not see any walls. These tables were just stretching out into the distance. They were covered with white linen cloth, which, which stands for purity, of course. And we, they had silver plates, silver goblets, silver cutlery, again, the redemption price, um, the 30 pieces of silver uh, and the red wine. And then there was a raised dais in the center of the room. And I knew that was where Yeshua would be seated with the friends of the groom. OK. And um, then I, I looked back at the angel and I said to the angel, well, what are you doing? Um, you know, pouring this wine into, into this goblet. And she said, I am preparing the supper for the bride of the lamb. For she is coming soon. Glory to God. Now that was back in 1995. So we are so much closer now. <laughs> but uh, with those words, I then found myself, at the time I was living in Newton Abbott in Devon, and with those words, I found myself back in my home in Newton Abbott in Devon. Glory to God. So that's the marriage supper of the Lamb, and we will take communion with our Lord because it's an ordinance, as it says, that must be remembered forever. So for the rest of eternity, we will be remembering uh, what Yeshua has done, done for us uh, with this Passover meal or the Passover cedar, as it's called in the Hebrew. So that is it. I hope that's been a blessing to you. If you want to know more, then I've got quite a lot of videos on my uh, Prophetic Insights YouTube channel that you can go to and study. Uh, or you can get the book or do both <laughs> if you like, uh, which is God's blueprint, uh, the seven seven prophetic keys, the redemption of mankind. So you just have to send me an email for that uh, to riveroflifeuk at hotmail.com. And it's free. I'm not, I, would, I will send it to you for free. It's just over 200 pages, but uh, you can have it for free. OK, and, and I pray it will be a blessing to you. Okay, so Sister Regine, over to you now. <laughs> and glory be to God. God. Everyone who's been listening to you is blessed. I really, I've seen this. Yes, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> blessed. You are a dictionary. You are bringing back the history. And it's perfect because tonight mm -hmm. is meant to be our Bible study. And you really brought oh, okay. us into teaching. So I know, and, and yes. I didn't have any guidance. I didn't ask you to do anything. So... I, as our <laughs> spirit knows, and I am so yeah. blessed, filled with uh, more knowledge. Hallelujah! More knowledge of who our Lord is. And oh Lord yes, is. I mean, the more I look at, into it, um, you know, the more I realize I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Yes. I, I'm so blessed. All the symbolism that you explained tonight. I think we need another, yes. another turn. We have to schedule yes. some very soon. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Yes. Yes, you're most welcome. I know that there's a lot in there. There really is an awful lot in there. I mean, I could have given a lot more, probably about double of what I've just given to you, but it's too much in just one session. It's true. I expect people, people's minds are going, oh my goodness. <laughs> Where do you go? Yes. Yeah. Well, I've been studying it for a long time now. So you, you to me, see. it's. Um, you know, well, since 1997, I've been I've been looking at um, you know the the scriptures uh, from the more of a messianic perspective. Amen. Um, so that's 20, that's 23 years worth of study. <laughs> Amen. It's a blessing. It's Amen. really because many uh, many believers really don't have that knowledge that uh, of the history. Oh, no. It's not it's not taught in the church. It's no. not. Not, and it's I mean, if you say to people, um, if you, if you um, studied the seven festivals of Yeshua, they'd simply say, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? It's they know true. nothing. They don't, even, they don't even know that Jesus's name in Hebrew is Yeshua. It's and true. that, again, I could do a whole exegesis just on Jesus's name. Wow. Yeshua, yeah, yeah, in the Hebrew. Yes. We but I just briefly touched on Yahweh, yod ha veh -ha. Uh, the hand of grace nailed in grace that literally means mm. we are blessed once again i know i knew mm. i knew we will be blessed because 
Last time when we had you was amazing. I had lots of comments from many people. I can't but, remember now what I spoke about. <laughs> it was about it was about healing. You you oh right on. yes yes I know I know. So I just want to bless God for your life, and I want to pray for you and everyone who is Thank listening. You. you are blessed. I want you to join me in spirit right now that we may pray mm. for her ministry because the word that God has given her to spread is no longer churches. Why? Because we want to preach or speak things that are actually irrelevant to our own world without knowing where we are coming from. And that's what you are bringing. You're going back to the, to the, back to the root and telling us the things that we ignore really, you know, knowing where everything started. Today we are celebrating the Passover. But many people don't know all those details because they didn't study hebrews they didn't they don't even read the bible let's start from there no, and many that's very true unfortunately celebrate yeah. because they were told you are a christian you must celebrate so i want us to pray uh, everyone everyone in rema who is around please pray with me right now that god would take her to another level where she can bring this word out and bless mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. father we proclaim yes. your greatness mm -hmm and your power Thank you, of your servant in the mighty name mm -hmm. of pray that Thank you make her lord you know where she stands right now you know what you want to do with her Thank you, Jesus. In the name of jesus for open doors that lord she will be able to spread the word you have given her to many around the world in the name. Mm -hmm. i pray for her family if I, her family members i pray for all her projects lord you know where you are taking her i pray that lord wherever she goes that all the doors will be open people will be there to help her to bring the word that you have given her mm -hmm. out and i so, also pray lord for her health i pray for the desire of her heart lord you know oh lord we have not given her anything you are the reward i pray that you reward her mm -hmm. give her everything that she needs mm -hmm. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. You are so blessed. Yes. And I know you, you are going to greet soon, but I hope, you know, with all that has happened, it, we were planning for you to come to visit us, but I hope and that even if you're in Greece, you'll be able to visit us in Jesus' name. Yes. Yes, that would be wonderful. Um, what, one question. Um, is Has this been recorded, Sister Regine? Yeah. Or did I will send you everything. Yeah, that would be wonderful because I, I do have um, um, some people that have not been able to join, obviously, um, okay. today's session. And they yeah. said to me, uh, will it be up on your YouTube channel? <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So, so it would be great if I can get it up on my YouTube channel so that those that have missed it um, can uh, follow the teaching because a lot of the revelation I have given tonight is actually quite new. Some of it is, well, not all of it, but some of it is new revelation that the Lord's oh. given to me recently. So, um, and I don't have a video up on YouTube um, covering this in such depth. I'm blessed so. that it's, it's from Rema to, I mean, you started revealing those through Rema Resource Center. So we feel even more yes. space. Amen. <laughs> Glory yes. to God who knows everything. Thank you so much for your availability. Thank you too, you. sister. Thank in you. Good work. We will continue praying for you. Stay blessed. Amen. Thank you. That would be wonderful. Thank you so much. God bless. God bless. Bye bye. You. Bye. So, as you all know, the program continues tomorrow with. Pastor Bienvenue Mboyo, who is coming from uh, Belgium. And then on Thursday, we will have uh, no, uh, our brother, our doctor, our pastor from Ghana. I'm, I'm, I think I've missed some place on here. We're on Tuesday, yes. Then Wednesday's tomorrow. Yes, Thursday we have, no, Thursday is, is uh, Prophetess Esther. Uh, sorry if you have not seen um anything about her right now the devil is a liar he's really attacking this the servants of god these days so please pray 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 for the servants of god it's not really easy she she was a kind you know her 
you know, she, she lost almost everything. So we pray that God will and allow her to be able to connect on, on Thursday and give us the word. And on Friday, we're going to have our brother coming from Ghana, who is actually the doctor and is a young doctor, a young pastor, you know, just, I think it's going to be very, very uh, interesting, especially for the youth who are finding it difficult to engage with the Lord and, and, and to commit. It will be very interesting to have, uh, to see what God can do when we really abandon ourselves to him. There's no age. Hallelujah. There's no age. You, when you are available and you want to be used, God will use you. And of course, last but not least, wow, I could not do anything, uh, where I am right here, uh, it is through my spiritual father who is going to be with us on Saturday. Pastor Jay Abeyi, everyone in Rema who's been there for a long time, you know him and you know that. Well, it is simple. If you say that Sister Regine has the word of God and you know that, then you imagine what the spiritual father has. Hallelujah. Because I, I'm not even like this compared to what he, he knows. Every time that I, I, I still listen to his preaching most most uh, as often as I can because I'm always inspired and he really taught me. He taught me patience. He taught me lots of things and I'm still here because of his teachings and uh, uh, and that is transmitted to you in Rama Resource Center so you can also transmit. So I bless God that he, he, he was able uh, to be able to be with us on Saturday. So stay tuned. It's at 7.30 every, uh, throughout this week until Saturday. And God will bless us. I'm, I know that tomorrow, prepare already. Because uh, what is interesting is that all the servants of God that I've got this week don't shout. Hallelujah. They are not the, hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. You know, it's not the, rah, rah. you know, it's not a bit like me sometimes when I'm a bit hyper. Very quiet, just like uh, Dr. Allison tonight. But the word that comes is always powerful. And that word transforms and it changes. I'm sure that people understood tonight. Dr. Allison said something that I found key, that it is in haste we need to leave the world. And that is key because many people have not left the world. You know, Passover is now. This is the time to make a decision to leave the world in haste. Leave the world in haste. There's no time to waste. Don't stay longer. Don't stay anymore. Just make your decision and leave in haste. And you're going to see what God has in store for you, what God wants to do with you, what God really has hidden so far because you have not left the world. So with that, I'm going to leave you now and I'm waiting for you tomorrow, 7.30 sharp by God's grace. And I also please pray because it was hard to log in tonight. You know, the devil is a liar. That's all I can say. So let's pray that even the instruments are not going to be uh, attacked. That's what I can say. God bless you all. Stay blessed.